I wanted to come on here and, and uh, share what John E. Deaton had posted today. Um, I thought it was pretty powerful, so I wanted to show you. Uh, he says, sums it up perfectly. The SEC's mission seems to be to protect the non-accredited investors from becoming accredited investors. So, you know, the SEC's whole mission is, you know, to protect uh, investors, right? So, to protect the non-accredited investors from becoming accredited investors. So, gaining, you know, building our net worth and being, you know, having the ability to convert into accredited investors. And he's responding to uh, Travis Kling's post where he was saying, we now have three Fed uh, Fed board members that have resigned due to the egregiousness of their insider trading during the COVID market crash, but they won't let you participate in airdrops worth thousands of dollars because you need to be protected. <laughs> I had to post this because this just exemplifies just the the just the frustration within me as a, a father of two and a husband that, you know, my wife and I work our butts off, you know, and, and are great contributing good citizens to society. We pay our taxes and then the little capital we put into the space, it gets hindered, you know, by lack of a lack of clarity, lack of regulation. Uh, you know, for some of you know out there, XRP is uh, one of my largest holding is my largest holding. And we've actually uh, bought XRP uh, at the end of 2017 and held and accumulated through this entire time. So for the SEC lawsuit to come out against Ripple, which then, you know, put a, a, a roadblock in um, XRP's growth and just the growth of uh, where we're at in the space in general has put a lot of, um, uh, I guess, obstacles within, you know, my wife and I achieving our own personal financial goals for our family. So to, to see uh, these two gentlemen post uh, the way they did, this is literally how I feel. And, and I truly believe this, you know, the way things are set up for, uh, you know, this whole Bill Hinman's, uh, you know, Ethereum free pass timeline that, you know, DAI, DAI talks about and Johnny Deaton and, you know, uh, all the other uh, uh, XRP and crypto uh, YouTubers uh, that bring up you know, with all like the, the, the shadiness and, you know, vagueness and roundabout answers that our SEC chairman gives when it comes to answering whether, you know, today's Ethereum is a security or not. And, you know, the over 60,000 uh, class action lawsuit investors that the SEC is set out to protect, so-called protect, you know, they can't even answer, you know, given questions that, you know, these uh, investors have. Just all this foolery that's going on this truly sums it up. And I truly believe, you know, what's going on here. It's like, okay, what are they set out to do? Obviously, you know, without throwing out any accusations from everything we've seen from the video footage of them talking throughout this entire so-called uh, uh, scandal or timeline, you know, it's like, what are these people doing? Like, yeah, they're going to help their buddies out. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's part of it. But it's like, are you really like hindering the everyday people who are busting their butt to pad the life that you're living because you live off taxpayer dollars, you're supporting your family off taxpayer dollars being, and you know, government officials being in the SEC. It's like, are you really gonna, you know, hinder them from achieving cer certain financial goals and financial freedom in their lives? I can tell you right now, that's something that I can't stand for. There's no laws or regulations saying that I can invest in, you know, uh, certain assets that's available on, you know, uh, exchanges like Coinbase or Uphold or uh, KuCoin or whatever the case is. Like, so when my wife and I, my wife's an NPM, a former firefighter, we work our butts off to earn the money we earn. Okay. We contribute to society. We're good. We're good people. We work to earn our money. We pay our taxes just like everybody else, which has the life that our government officials have. And then the little bit of capital we can we have after paying all our you know monthly expenses, we like to put a certain amount of money into the market. But then when we have one of our largest holdings, even though we have a lot of Ethereum, we have a lot of other assets, but it's like one of our largest holdings have been slapped in the face with an SEC lawsuit based off of some information that they don't even know the answer to. It's like, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to, you know, hinder my family from uh, you know, progressing in life to achieving more than we would normally achieve working our normal jobs. Like what, what's your agenda here? And I know it's not just me personally, but this, this channel is about me sharing my testimony, me having a conversation with you all kind of let you know how I interpret things. 
And I know it's not just my family. It's, you know, all you other investors out there, especially if you're watching this channel, I know you're an investor in, you know, XRP and other projects. And, you know, with the lack of, uh, you know, clarity in, 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 the, in the market, how are we supposed to grow as a cryptocurrency space? How are our digital assets and all these blockchain companies supposed to grow and expand if they don't know what's the rules? What's the legalities behind things? What can we or cannot do? There's a lot of people from the employee side that are ready and willing to jump into the blockchain space and jump into, you know, uh, you know, the Ethereum training and work for Ripple and, and do all these different things. Right. But a lot of them are hesitant because there's no there's there's no clarity there. We need some regulation, regulation within reason. We need the right people in place that can set solid foundation that won't hinder the, the growth and progress, especially in the U.S., but just in the crypto uh, crypto market in general. That, that won't hinder it, it, the, the growth and progress of this entire space because it, it not only affects the United States, it affects the entire world and how we do things. Everything that we've seen from the time of, you know, uh, Bitcoin and, you know, uh, 2009 till now, there's been so much growth and development. The, the, the crypto space and digital asset space has offered so much in regards of, you know, now we have NFTs. Now we can, you know, send money real time right now within seconds with, you know, assets like XRP. You have, you know, great L1s like Solana, uh, even though Ethereum super high in gas fees and can be slow at times. I mean, it's offered a lot of projects to develop their own projects within. You have layer twos that support Ethereum and do all these other different things. There's so much going on within the space that's truly changing. In people's lives. There's people in uh, other countries that, you know, don't have the greatest of life and don't have the highest of incomes. And, you know, they're playing, P to, uh, you know, play to earn games that are allowing them to earn a uh, living better than they would earn if they were going out working their normal jobs out there. There's so much that is offered throughout this space. So, yes, something as simple as, you know, this statement Johnny D uh, had put up here impacts everything it's not just the individual it's the entire space which it can impact the entire imagine if someone in uh the internet age when the internet first came about or you know the whole dot-com internet space imagine if that was truly hindered and the people that were so against it at the time had you know uh all the power and they just put a stamp on it and it just wasn't allowed to flourish where would we be now you know, will we have our Amazons? Will we have our Googles? Will we have, you know, our Teslas and all these other great, you know, tech companies out there that have truly impacted and changed the way we do things? Like, would that all be a thing? You know, right now, we've seen a lot of growth within the crypto market. We've seen a lot of growth in the tech. We've seen the impact that it can make. No one knows for sure, you know, what assets are going to be here 20, 30 years from now? We don't, no one knows where this space is going to be, you know, uh, in the future from now, 100%. But for what we've seen and the, and the growth we see and the people that are highly involved creating these projects that are in it every single day, they have great insight as to what this space has to offer for us. And just from a, from a humble standpoint, as a husband and a father of two, I want to offer my family everything that, I possibly can. I don't want my kids and my family to ever have to experience what I experienced growing up as a kid, growing up in struggle, growing up around negativity, violence, living off um, welfare, just to sustain a life. I, I never want that. My wife and I work extremely hard, just like a lot of you families out there. We bust our butt every single day to, to sustain a life for our family. And the little bit of money we have left to throw into the space, we expect it to help build us. We don't need people out there picking winners and losers and putting a hinder into the crypto space that we're investing in where there's no clarity in. There's no legal no legal precedent saying we can't invest in it. We don't need we don't need people out there hindering that. So with that being said, like when it comes to the non-accredited, which I'm a non-accredited retail investor, I put very vol very small capital that I can into the space. Protecting a non-accredited investor from becoming accredited investors, I can tell you right now, I can care, I can care less about being an accredited investor. Like I don't I don't care about the label. Yes, I want I want what they have as a net worth. I want my family to be financially free. I want life-changing wealth for my family. I want my kids on their 18th birthday, I want to be able to pass down a house to my kid and say, hey, you take your brother. 
and you guys partner, this is your property, completely own outright, you do the right thing and build a life for yourself. Let me share something personal with you. My mom left this earth at 42 years old with nothing. She left her kids nothing, five kids. And that's no shade on my mom. I love my mom. But to have nothing, to leave this earth with nothing and to leave your family with nothing. And we had to pay money to cremate and, 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 and so-called bury her and all these different things. We had to pay you know, certain debt she had, all these things. That cannot be a thing for me. I want to do everything in my power. Me and my wife want to do everything in our power to set our family up for success. And it's not just for me and my kids. I have in-laws. I have siblings that I want to do for and provide for. I have a community. I have people that I can impact. Obtaining financial freedom and life-changing wealth will allow me and my family to do a lot more for not only my family, but for the people around us, the community around us, and just the world we live in. And that's what it's all about. And the crypto space offers that. There's a lot of crypto projects out there that truly make a difference, like I said, about you know those uh, people living in those third world countries that are uh, those uh, lower income countries that, you know, barely make ends meet, but they can play, you know, crypto play to earn game and earn a good living. Like it's, it's impacting lives. We got to protect it and do everything in our power to make sure that this space flourishes because we're all going to be successful. I just wanted to show you this. I thought it was, uh, at first it was, it was funny, but then it kind of hit home with me and it kind of bothered me because I, I just don't want someone to ever tell me that, you know, I, I, you know, you can't do that. Well, where's the, where's the rule saying I can't do that? I don't want someone to, you know, to pick and choose what I can invest in to impact my family's life. I don't like that. I work hard for my family, just like you work hard for your family. So we should have the right to put our money where we want to put it and risk what we want to risk. That's all I wanted to say. Be safe out there. Stay strong.